pizza crust. Oh yeah. What we're going to need today is five cups of flour, two cups of water, two tablespoons of yeast, two tablespoons of honey or sugar or syrup, plus any spices or herbs as you want. Yes, I know. My kitchen is a little bit of a mess, but it's also a little bit little, so uh, you're just going to have to deal with it. Now, this can be mixed by hand or with a mixer. Just showing off that I'm using a one cup scoop there for the flour. <clears throat> I found that if you mix it by hand, the dough seems to be a bit more smooth, but it doesn't seem to get as fluffy. So that's why I prefer to go ahead and use a mixer with the dough. And also, I haven't really noticed a difference in this case because it's not like you're making a cake. The uh, the dough, the flour does not have to be sifted. It tends to mix rather well, at least the way that I do it, which probably is over mixing. But. So you get your cups of flour out there, and then you get an extra cup for later. That way you can put away your flour and not have to worry about spilling it all over the counter. Then you find the spices that you want to get. In this case, parsley. I find that it adds a really nice flavor to the crust. And since you're making quite a few, I always use the scoop option. And tend to just kind of dump it out and not really measure. Normally I would say I probably add about two tablespoons, maybe a bit more. In this case, I didn't have a whole lot left, so I went ahead and just added the rest of the pot. Then I went ahead and added some salt. Use the pink Himalayan sea salt in this case. Any salt will do. That's just uh, one of the ones that we get at uh, Costco. And it Gets it, gets it in bulk, so it's cost effective. <clears throat> Once again, I think that's probably about a tablespoon, maybe a little more. And then you want to go ahead and mix all of the dry ingredients first. That way, whenever you add the yeast later, it doesn't kill the yeast. Now, I've had a lot of people and read a lot of things saying that the salt kills the yeast instantly if it comes in contact with the salt. However, I have not really experienced this. I've only baked one type of bread where I believe that the yeast and salt conflicted and caused problems because it did not rise properly. So I have a two cup measuring cup here, and I'm going to fill it with warm water. The reason why you do that is that the yeast is dry frozen, so it comes in little granules that you have to scoop. So not only does the water loosen it up and wake it up, the heat actually activates it. And immediately, you know, I don't know about you, but if I was dry frozen, I would be pretty hungry as soon as I woke up. So that's what you want to do is you want to use warm water to wake it up and then you use the sugar or syrup of choice for it to have something to eat on. <clears throat> Just showing that I have a tablespoon there, nice reflection of the GoPro. And you used two tablespoons is what I use of yeast. Now 
And now you add your sugar or syrup, or in this case, I'm using honey. I have noticed that honey and maple syrup tend to be the best. I don't know if it's because they're not super concentrated like sugar or brown sugar is, but those are the ones that I prefer to use. So basically, one tablespoon of syrup for every tablespoon of yeast that you use. Of course, you want to get your the rest of your kitchen ready with your pans. One of the whole things is is that a lot of people use like the baking stones. I haven't used those a whole lot. They do tend to make the crisp crust, but I found that the pans that have the holes in them allow the air to get through it a lot better, and uh, that allows the crust to be much more crispy in the center. Uh, if you use the pans or even like a cookie sheet that doesn't have holes in the bottom, then I notice there's quite a bit of sogginess that goes on. So that's why I prefer those. And you can see that the yeast is foamed up, which is exactly what you want. That tells you it's active and it's producing the CO2 and ready to be mixed in. That way it causes your dough to rise. Now, I always start off mixing slow because the flour and the water don't mix instantly. So if you turn it on and you just instantly turn it on really fast, then powder goes everywhere. I mean, it's already kind of messy, but I'm just kind of watch how it goes here. And yes, I've sped this up a lot just because it takes time and I don't think that uh, most people would want to watch a ton of this. So I always scoop it off just to make sure things are getting mixed really well. And you coat your ladle or your, your paddle with flour. That way it doesn't stick to it so much. And you basically want to get this to a nice dough just like that. And you can see that it comes off the hook real easy. It's not super sticky. It's not something that you really have to overly worry about. Change the angle up here a little bit. Then I have this sifter that I got from my mother, which I believe she got from her grandmother. Made in the USA. I've never seen one of these brand new before. But they are by far the best sifters you can find. Usually you'll find them sometimes in like antique stores or odd st oddity stores like that. But fantastic thing to use. So you get that out, you set that out there, and you can see the dough, it's not sticking to my hands, it's not, you know, not trying to fall apart. A little bit out of frame there. There we go. You basically want to roll it up into a dough ball. That way it gives it plenty of area to expand in all directions. You set it on there, let it rest. Usually, most recipes say you need to let it double in size. Mm, that's about right. If you watch this, it doesn't quite get that big. But... Here I am sectioning out the dough, and obviously, since it's round, I can cut it into relatively four equal pieces. Now, whatever you cut into this, you'll notice that the inside of the dough is more sticky because it hasn't had the coating that the outside has. <clears throat> so, you add a little bit of flour to the outside of it, set it down, and you do that for each one of them, just so it doesn't get too overly sticky, and put them all in kind of a ball shape. last one it doesn't entirely matter so much because you're going to be rolling it out right away. 
So you want to coat your rolling pin. This is a French rolling pin, I believe is what it's called. And it is especially made for rolling things out in a round shape. You'll see I don't have a terrible amount of counter space here, so I'm bumping into things and rolling over the other dough balls, but you know, gotta make do with what you got. The pizza will taste the same no matter what the size of your kitchen. And you'll want to occasionally flip it over or you'll have to recoat the top of it with flour because it tends to get sticky because you're rolling everything out and it's mushing it. So it allows that coating of flour to no longer be there so it'll stick or stick onto your hands or the rolling pin. Testing it out, make sure it's the right size for the uh, pizza pan that I'm going to be using. In this case I think that is a 16 inch pan. I have to double check. And then of course you want to stretch it out and you want to do it very carefully because if you try to stretch it out all from one area you're going to end up with a hole. Now if you roll it out all the way and it's already the full size of the pan you don't have to worry about it as much. But you can see I'm kind of going over the edges a bit as I'm stretching it out that's because whenever you put it in the oven to bake for the first time then it shrinks because the heat causes all the water to be removed which causes the crust to shrink and I don't make everything perfect I just tend to roll it out make sure it's about the right size and go my family doesn't really care that it's a completely round pizza Oh yeah, one of the things that I found is the best is whenever you are rolling it out, especially like this, if you roll it out directly in front of you and then you rotate it 90 degrees and roll it out in front of you again, kind of like what I was doing there, then that tends to spread it out more evenly, which allows you to roll it into a round shape a lot easier. But that French rolling pin, my wife got me that, and I was like, what the heck is this? Because I had never seen one before. I'm not a professional chef, but I really like to cook. Or bake, more precisely. And that thing does an amazing job compared to a regular rolling pin of making these round shapes. I suppose I should say that uh, whenever the dough was rising that took about two to three hours um, so you definitely want to give it plenty of time you can also put it in the refrigerator if you want to save it for later you just have to be careful that uh, if you do put it in the refrigerator be sure it's put somewhere where it doesn't get to the coldest point in your refrigerator so now it's baking time. Now you bake this at 350 degrees for about 11 to 12 minutes. It depends on your oven. My oven is a convection oven, so that means that the heat stays relatively constant all around the entire oven because it has a fan that blows everything around. Conventional ovens, usually the bottom of the oven is warmer and, or the top is warmer. But it really just kind of depends on your oven. So, so 350 degrees for 11 to 12 minutes. And then you want to take them out and let them cool. I love that mutton. See how it doesn't stick to the pan. If you try to roll out the dough on the actual pan that you're going to use, I find that it sticks almost every time. 
that's why you definitely want to use a counter space or uh, somewhere to roll it out before you actually put it on your pan. <clears throat> so, what I do here is I take the first one off, get the area ready to roll it out, and I make the other two. I suppose I should answer that the reason why I make four at a time is because we generally uh, make this for a friend of ours and you know they have their own pizza movie night just like we do that's one of our family traditions and now that I've got everything done I tend to just stack them all together put the last one on top and put it like that that way no dogs specifically you may see them walking around in the background sometimes no dogs can get to them and no other flies or anything else can get on them so that is pretty much it I hope you enjoyed it if you did like it if you didn't don't like it but there's my contact info thank you very much